Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 206th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Starting off, we have a lot to cover. I'm going to present some of the articles found on Best Tech Info in a more condensed manner. I will have links to all of them down below in the more info if you want additional information on them. I'm mostly going to be discussing Apple's rumored iWatch as well as the iPhone 6, both of which are expected to be unveiled this coming Tuesday, September 9th, during Apple's now confirmed media event, which I discussed in last week's episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. So starting off, we have new leaked images of what's allegedly the rear camera for the 5.5 inch iPhone six. Now, while I did provide some exclusive coverage on the rumored 5.5 inch iPhone 6 variant, including leaked back housing images from my source that originated deep within inside, there haven't really been many leaks related to the device. And that's mostly because it's expected that the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 will be released at a later date, not alongside the 4.7 inch iPhone 6 that's expected to be unveiled again on Tuesday. And the images of the component itself reveal that while it is slightly thinner, it is overall bigger than the corresponding part for the iPhone 5S. And while yes, it will feature improved optics, which is expected of course, it will apparently sport optical image stabilization, which is something that's new. Previous iPhone models, particularly the iPhone 5S, have utilized digital image stabilization. So it will definitely be interesting to see what happens during the event and what Apple actually unveils, whether they unveil just the 4.7 inch model or both the 5.5 inch and the 4.7 inch variant. All right, and also on the note of the event, itself. I will have complete live coverage on Best Tech Info. I will update you guys here on YouTube prior to the event, which again is scheduled to take place on September 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And I will have both video and written coverage on Best Tech Info. The video coverage will actually be a live stream from within inside Apple's event itself, and the written coverage will most likely be in the form of Twitter updates for those who can't exactly watch video at that point in time, and will definitely be helpful for those who maybe have classes to get to. But rest assured, either way, I will update you guys on both Facebook and Twitter. All right, moving on, let's discuss Apple's upcoming iWatch. Now, with only a few days left between now and the event, we're nearing the end of rumors pertaining to the redesigned iPhone 6 and the highly mysterious iWatch, as both of which are expected to be unveiled again during the event this coming Tuesday. Now, as suggested in a new report from the Wall Street Journal, it appears as though the elusive iWatch will tout near field communication, or NFC for short, technology. Now, similar to the iPhone 6, which was all but confirmed to come equipped with NFC when the device's motherboard or logic board was leaked. Both the iWatch and the next generation iPhone will likely use the technology primarily for mobile payments. Furthermore, the iWatch will allegedly be available to purchase in two size variations, both of which are said to feature a curved OLED display. And the device will also boast an impressive array of health and fitness sensors that will likely tie into iOS 8's health app. And as a concluding note for that report, while sources indicate that Apple may begin accepting pre-orders for the iWatch and that the price remains as much of a mystery as the device itself, an earlier report from Recode provides the first realistic price range for the device, which I'll get to in a second. But following that report, a new one from the New York Times seemingly confirmed the aforementioned features for Apple's upcoming iWatch, suggesting that the device will be sold in again two size variations, be geared towards health and fitness tracking, include NFC or near field communication to support mobile payments, and be capable of accomplishing other various tasks. However, that may only be the tip of the iceberg, as according to this latest rumor, Apple will allegedly utilize both wireless charging and flexible display technology when creating the iWatch. So according to employees who wish to remain anonymous, Apple's forthcoming iWatch is, quote, one of Apple's most ambitious projects to date. The company has also reportedly invested a, quote, enormous amount of time and financial resources for the health and fitness aspect of the device, which will apparently be, quote, much more accurate than current fitness devices on the market. All right, now moving on to a new rumor and information from Recode, which was actually the same source that initially confirmed Apple's September 9th media event prior to the company issuing its official invitations. Apple executives allegedly, quote, discussed an approximate price of a seemingly high $400 for the iWatch. However, if true, it's also possible that the company may have lower end models planned with prices that match accordingly. Also keep in mind that the information highlighted is merely as good as its source. It all depends on 
on how old said information is and whether Apple plans on making the device affordable for most. And while we won't know for sure until it's officially announced, just be sure to stay tuned as I'll keep you guys updated on everything related to the iWatch, including the device's price. And as I mentioned in last week's episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, while it's expected that the iWatch will be unveiled alongside the iPhone 6 this coming Tuesday, it won't be released until after the iPhone 6 is, and it's possible that the device's shipping date may get pushed back until as far as 2015. As I just mentioned though, stay tuned for complete coverage on the iWatch. And now moving on, let's discuss Samsung. So yes, the company did unveil their next array of mobile devices. During this year's 2014 IFA, Samsung's presentation led to the company's unveiling of the Galaxy Note 4, which features a 5.7 inch quad ultra HD display, the Note Edge, which actually has a rounded edge that provides adaptive controls depending on which app is actually active on the phone at any given time. Time, a new Gear S smartwatch and a definitely peculiar Gear VR or virtual reality headset. And there's more information on all of that linked to on the article that's down below in the more info. I highly recommend going there if you're at all interested in Samsung's next generation of mobile devices. And now moving on, let's discuss jailbreaking. And while I'm going to go over some details that I've mentioned previously in past episodes of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, there will be kind of some new information. So if you're at all interested in iOS 8 as well as 7.1.2, the current jailbreak, and including the next untethered jailbreak, just be sure to watch this video in its entirety. However, if you're not, there will be an annotation on the bottom of the display now to kind of skip ahead to the end of this episode. So of course, to preface, there is an untethered jailbreak for iOS 7.1 through 7.1.2. It's called Pangu, and it was released by the new Pangu dev team on the jailbreak scene. Again, it's a fully untethered jailbreak and it works for every device that's currently out. However, as Apple's September 9th iPhone 6 and possibly iWatch unveiling event draws closer, the days of the Pangu jailbreak 7.1.2 utility are numbered. The writing's on the wall and the future is upon us. As I've stated before in past episodes, when Apple releases their next major firmware to the public, which at this point will undoubtedly be the first iteration of iOS 8, they'll patch the 7.1.2 jailbreak. It still remains a wonderful time for jailbreakers who opt to be a part of the incredible world that is jailbreaking though, as it remains possible to jailbreak the latest public firmware fully untethered, of course being 7.1.2 by way of Pangu. So if you have yet to jailbreak, I definitely recommend doing so now, as again, the utility will be patched with the release of iOS 8. I will have a link to my in-depth tutorial down below in the more info that will walk you through every step required to fully jailbreak any device that's currently out. However, the iPhone 6 and iOS 8, Apple's next major hardware and software releases respectively, will open up an entire plethora of previously unforeseen possibilities for the jailbreak community to trend toward. That being said though, the forthcoming iOS 8 firmware as well as the iPhone 6 still pose a threat to iOS 7.1.2 jailbreakers and it's inevitable that a countless number of said jailbreakers will encounter issues once iOS 8 is made available to the public. Now as a general rule of thumb for jailbreakers, it's common practice to avoid iOS 8 updates as they'll always result in the loss of a device's jailbroken state and can even lock out jailbreaking on the firmware that was updated to if the jailbreak was patched by Apple. And still, whether it's due to mistake or simply a lack of knowledge by not being part of the jailbreak community for long enough, I can't tell you how many users update each year and lose their jailbreak. It's really unfortunate, especially considering new jailbreak utilities are definitely rare at this point. But with that said, don't needlessly fret as there's a simple way to ensure that you're not the victim of Apple's next jailbreak patching iOS 8 firmware. Simply don't update if you wish to maintain your device's jailbroken state. However, if you're interested in iOS 8 and all of the features the firmware offers, then you can update. Just know that you won't be able to jailbreak for what will likely be some time to come. But with that being said, there is a new iOS 8 jailbreak currently in development from multiple teams who will likely rush to release. And if you want more information on that, of course, just be sure to check out the article down below in the more info from Evasion Jailbreak. I'm going to wrap up this week's episode by saying if you liked it and you're interested in my $100 Amazon giveaway, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's been posted, just be sure to visit bit.ly forward slash get free app life or freeapplife.com inside of mobile Safari 
Safari. And then once downloaded, install sponsored apps for points and redeem said points for various prizes, including paid apps, gift cards, and electronic devices. And if you don't know what to leave in the comments, let me know down below or on Best Tech Info what you think of Apple's upcoming iPhone 6 and the iWatch, and what features do you hope Apple will include in both? Also, I am planning on hosting an iPhone 6 giveaway once the device is officially announced and released. To be sure that you qualify to enter again, just be sure to download free app life and install sponsored offers from the app on a daily basis. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos covering various things like the iPhone 6, the upcoming iWatch, as well as the next Untethered Jailbreak, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.